Hello. Hello and welcome. Well, here we are. <laughs> We've dragged ourselves from our beds of sickness. <laughs> welcome to the COVID house. <laughs> welcome to COVID central. Oh dear. After avoiding it for over two years, it's finally struck home here. Yeah. So. So we've been off, self-isolating, and uh, hopefully by the time this goes out, you might actually be... I may have my freedom. You might be. But then again, we might still be, not be locked indoors. The two of us and your mum. Yeah, the three of us have got COVID. Yes, sadly so. it's meant that Ola, Cameron and Seth have headed back to Orkney um, to keep themselves safe. They have already had it, but we're not taking any chances. And give us more freedom to roam about yeah, the house. Yeah, it's not much fun being stuck in one room for... <laughs> well, I've been there since Monday. Yes. <laughs> so I tested first. I tested positive first. So that's one of the reasons that we're wearing our you know, alternative uniforms. I'm sure that Joe will appreciate this. Yes. Yeah, I should have had something maybe... Well, I don't know, it's quite bright. It's, it's not bad at all. Yes. Yeah. So. So the announcements are that there was no meeting this morning um, in Inverness, no gathered worship. No. So this evening's um, meeting is going to be slightly different. It's going to be almost a kind of blend of the two, the yeah. online worship and the, the gathered worship. Yeah. Yeah. You're going to be the songsters? <sighs> Maybe not. Um, and I we've really decided to, <laughs> to cancel most of our Holy Week um, events. Yeah, because yeah. there are one or two in the, um, of our number who have also tested positive, so... And we're not sure how we're going to be over the next few days. So, today, I'm going to say today's a good day. I did think today was a good day and then I felt a bit rubbish over lunchtime, but hey ho. Wait till we start singing. <laughs> Sing up at home today, please. <laughs> I apologise, <laughs> but advance. I think I'll be singing bass. <laughs> Envy, yes. There we are. So I think next Sunday it's just going to be the um, Easter morning service. Easter morning service and... Um, at 10.30 yeah, in and, the hall. And hopefully it will be live next Sunday night. We're hoping so. All being well. Yeah. Watch this space. If, if there are any changes to that, um, we will be putting that on our Facebook page yeah. so that people know in advance. What's happening. So we're going to start with number 148. Number 148. You've got to manage a little croak when it comes to the chorus. Well, nothing see else. Yes. Do. Make way, make way for Christ the King in splendour arrives. Fling wide the gates and welcome him into your lives. <clears throat> make way, make way for Christ the King in splendour the gates and welcome into Oh, 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 oh,
we go on. I hope so. We'll just have to wait and see. Anyway, I share with you um, words of Psalm 86, um, and this is from a paraphrase um, Psalms now. O oh Lord, my prayer to you always comes out of a life full of need. I am your servant. I'm trying to represent you. I need your support for every step I take. How gracious you are to hear my plea and respond to my cry and pour out your forgiving love upon me. People are so foolish about the things they love and worship. You alone are God and you alone possess the healing grace that can support and sustain fickle hearts. Continue to lead me in your course for my life. Enable me to walk body and soul in loving obedience to you. Then I shall glorify you forever and my life shall be a continual thank offering to you. I find the daily journey not only difficult but painful. There are forces within me and around me that overpower me, but you are a loving and patient God. Continue to have mercy upon me, to stir me from the doldrums of sin, to deliver me from selfish involvements, to forgive my sins and failures, to shore up the weak places in my life. Help me feel your loving acceptance and reflect to others the joy of being your child and servant. Amen. And shall we pray? Father God, we just thank you that we are able to come and uh, to join together in this way. Lord, we just thank you for the many blessings that you have given us day by day. And today on Palm Sunday, we just thank you that um, we can indeed hail you as King and King, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. We thank you, Lord, that as we think about today and we think about the start of your journey to the cross, that you will help us always to remember that it's because of you that we are able to have peace in our lives. We pray for those who need you in a very special way just now. Touch their lives and may they know your presence with them. We ask all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 <clears throat> well, we're going to attempt to sing another song. Number 356. I really hope that you're singing loudly at home to try and cover <laughs> <Just that sound. clears throat> Children of Jerusalem, sang the praise of Jesus' name. Children too of modern days, join to sing the Saviour's praise. Hark, 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 while children's voices sing, loud hosannas, loud hosannas to our King. Children of Jerusalem sang the praise of Jesus' name. Children to a modern days joined to sing the Saviour's praise. Hark, 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 while children's voices sing. Hark, 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 while children's voices sing. Maybe four. <coughs> I think it's four. 
Who rides a donkey? Jesus didn't pick the donkey because it happened to be available. He chose it because he wanted to point people to what was written in their holy writings. Do not be afraid, daughter of Zion. See, your king is coming, seated on a donkey's coat. Jesus is saying, or rather showing, that the crowds have got one thing right, that he is king. By riding the donkey, he's making a statement, your king is coming. But he's doing more than that because John didn't write out everything that is written, everything that one of Israel's prophets, the people regard, Israel regarded as a mouthpiece of God, had uttered 600 years before. Here's what Zechariah and what every Jew lining the roads as Jesus passed would have known by heart. As you listen, think about what Jesus is really claiming to be. Rejoice greatly, daughter Zion. Shout, daughter Jerusalem. See your king come to you, righteous and victorious, lowly and riding on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. I will take away the chariots from Ephraim and the war horses from Jerusalem, and the battle bow will be broken. He will proclaim peace to the nations. His rule will extend from sea to sea and from the river to the ends of the earth. As for you, because of the blood of my covenant with you, I will free your prisoners from the waterless pit. The king Zechariah is talking about is neither unspectacular nor dull. This king is all-powerful. And his rule is all-encompassing. He will rule from sea to sea over an empire greater than any the world has seen. This king is all-conquering. His people won't need to fight their own battles because he'll fight and win their battles for them. He will bring peace to the world and freedom to his peoples. The king will be all perfect. He will be righteous in all he says, decides and does. How do you spot this king? Zechariah gave you just one sign. He would be riding a donkey in Jerusalem as they shouted joyfully about him. Now, Centuries later, a man who had just freed a friend from the grave reached the outskirts of Jerusalem, found a young donkey and sat upon it. That man was saying, read Zechariah's prediction about the coming king, then look at me on the donkey. I am that king. I have come to start building my kingdom, and one day my kingdom will cover every inch of this world. Who rides a donkey? We're going to turn to another song now, number 196. Number 196. Ride on, ride on in majesty, hark all the tribes, Hosanna cry. Thine humble beast pursues his road with palms and scattered garments strewed. Ride on, ride on in majesty, hark all the tribes, Hosanna cry. Thine humble beast pursues his road with palms and scattered garments strewed. If you got it here, here we go. Right. <laughs> ride on, ride on in majesty, in lonely pomp, ride on to die. 
Christ thy joy is the bigot, or captive death had conquered sin. Ride on, ride on in majesty, the winged squadrons of the sky. Look to the Sabbath, wondering eyes, to see the approaching sacrifice. Ride on, ride on in majesty, the last and fiercest night is nigh. The Father on his upward throne expects his I really was struggling to keep the last note on long enough for you to get the right card. We are doing our best. <laughs> Under very trying circumstances. <laughs> oh dear. Oh. And we are just doing this in one take. There's yes, no way we're, yeah. go we're going to back. We're not going to do any it. takes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Where are we now? Scripture reading. So reading from St. Mark. Mark's Gospel, chapter 11. I just want to get the right Bible reading here. Mark chapter 11, verses 1 to 11. As they approached Jerusalem and came to Bethphage and Bethany at the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two of his disciples, saying to them, Go to the village ahead of you, and just as you enter it, you will find a colt tied there, which no one has ever ridden. Untie it and bring it here. If anyone asks you, why are you doing this? Tell him the Lord needs it and will send it back here shortly. They went and found a colt outside in the street, tied at a doorway. As they untied it, some people standing there asked, What are you doing untying that colt? They answered as Jesus had told them to, and the people let them go. When they brought the colt to Jesus and threw their cloaks over it, he sat on it. Many people spread their cloaks on the road while others spread branches they had cut in the fields. Those who went ahead and those who followed shouted, Hosanna! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the coming kingdom of our father David. Hosanna in the highest. Jesus entered Jerusalem and went to the temple. He looked around at everything, but since it was already late, he went out to Bethany with the twelve. Amen. Amen. It is a fascinating reading, that. And uh, one that year after year we can return to uh, and find something fresh in that to challenge us and to, to make us think again about Jesus entering into Jerusalem on that day. We're going to turn now to song number 56. Song 56. This is going to be high, yes. <laughs> Oh, it seemed like a good idea at the time. It seemed like a very good idea at the time. This, I think this was one that I'd chosen for gathered worship, so it wouldn't have been quite as bad with another 40 voices 40 people to singing. try and cover, cover up our okay. struggle. <clears throat> praise to the Lord, the Almighty, the King of creation. Oh, my soul, praise him. Praise thy <clears throat> health and salvation. All ye who hear, brothers and sisters, draw near. Praise him in glad adoration. Praise the Lord, the Almighty, the King of creation. Oh, my soul, praise Him, for He is thy help and salvation. Oh, ye who hear, brothers and sisters, come here. Praise to the Lord who doth prosper thy work and defend thee. Surely his goodness and mercy here daily attend thee. Father of you, what the Almighty can do, he who with love. Thank you. 
about getting that note. <laughs> That's you, a bit of a you, know, you, know which, you know which note I'm talking about. I think we just about got there by the fifth verse. And, and as we were just about getting there, I was suddenly being put off by watching myself on the screen <laughs> and seeing Don't that it's, it's slightly behind. On oh, right. It's okay. not quite in sync with, with us speaking. Okay. That was really bizarre. There we are. So, we are going to have a little bit of a talk, hopefully. Yes? Yeah, I think so. Times we've been in a crowd and what it does to us. Oh dear. Are there any crowds that you can think of that have made a difference with you? You've never been in a crowd. Oh yeah. Oh, you have? Okay. Yeah. Um, football crowd. <laughs> football crowds, yeah. Bruce will tell you, you know. Well, you go to watch Dundee. I'm actually kind of banned from going because they usually lose. Um, they usually lose. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Before, but, before John but, could say anything. Up the yeah, but, but what what I would say is that, you know, they're losing, okay, and pff, I, I can't even repeat what's being said. And then they score. Yes. Okay. They still lose the game, but they score, okay. It's probably in the sort of 89th minute or something and they score. And the place goes wild, and all of a sudden they're the best, and and, and it's that that one moment, mm -hmm. you know, where <laughs> two minutes before there'd been absolute garbage, <laughs> and, and they're whoo, they're the best team ever, but they're still lost. But you know, it's just that one thing that can change. You're laughing at me. I'm laughing at your nose. <laughs> the left side of your nose is squint. No. <laughs> it, it, it just sorry, folks. Excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> what have I got? I've tried to, I've tried to cover. Tried to give red. myself some colour. Col well, the only thing that's got any colour on my face is my nose. <laughs> so I've tried to dye it down a bit. Sorry. Yes. Well, I, I, I think. Oh, you know, certainly Dundee games. You were there and dragged myself and Archie. I did not. Myself no, and, and Archie. They were either the side of me. We, and they we took did me. not stand a chance when you <laughs> decided <laughs> to charge onto the pitch. After but Dundee must have won a league. Must have been years and years and years ago. It was before we had any kids, I'm yeah, sure it was. It was because Ireland had never seen Dundee win a league until fairly recently. Okay. And uh he didn't know whether we, we were allowed to run on the pitch or not. <laughs> was that the one where the helicopter was going? Yes. <laughs> yeah, I was sitting in um, my sister-in-law's house with two Dundee United supporters who were praying that Dundee would... You could hear the helicopter above going yeah, round and that, round. that was the Saturday that Ireland acquired the goalkeeper's towel. Yeah. So, um, former Dundee goalkeeper... If you're, you're looking for your nameless, <laughs> if you're looking for your towel, Ireland has it. Ireland has it. And we'd be more than happy to return it 
if you go to his place, give him a signed autograph and a replacement. Um, <laughs> yes. It, it, it is an amazing thing to be part of that crowd uh, and to get rid of perhaps the the normal things that would make you feel more self-conscious about yourself. Yeah. The other time, the other... <laughs> going to really embarrass the kids tonight, I'm going to... Oh dear. Ola had done really well at school, so her treat was... <laughs> <laughs> ticket to the McFly concert. But she was too young to go on her own, so mum went with her. And um, I remember going, it was the SECC, and going in, and um, it was all these young girls and their mums. And basically, I was told, please do not embarrass me, and please do not stand on the seat, and please no, do not dance and sing, you know. But it's okay for her to do it, but not for uh -huh. me, you know. Of course. But it's that whole thing, everybody else does it, so you just get up and you do it. I can't remember if I did. I think maybe I did. I think much, I have done. much to her embarrassment. I think you, you would have to do that. Yeah. yeah. It would be a waste not to. Yeah. Truly. Definitely. Yes. It was a good concert. It was good. Uh huh. Yeah. What about. Were you ever on Congress marches? Yeah. How did that feel? That was pretty good. I think the. The best one was when Kirkwall Band headed North Scotland Division. So that that would have been yeah. before you had spent a lot of time in in bigger areas. You know, when, when the Salvation Army has a number of corps, you obviously did that when you were a child. But yeah. you know, so yeah, I can remember you had a number of years of work. In the... Yeah, Eva Burris was the TC, and she was desperate to have Kirkwall Band down at the. Congress that we did, I think it was 1982, I think it was, that we went, and, um, yeah, I think it was 1982, and um, we headed North Scotland Division, and it was good, yeah, that was just to be, and then another, another march that I was on was uh, at the Youth Congress in America, with the Scotland Territory, yeah. and national, national dress, and had this, had this big board to carry, which was pretty tough in hot weather. If anybody's watching that was there, you'll know what it was like. I mean, we were practically fainting in the heat. And that was an amazing experience. Yeah. 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 What about um, our commissioning time? Yeah. That, that was that was a fantastic experience, wasn't it? It was. Um, being in the, the Royal Albert Hall, back in the days when we took over the Royal Albert Hall for commissioning and all yeah. the rest of it. Um, and suddenly you have to be far less concerned about yourself um, and, yeah. and be part of something far, far, far bigger, bigger. Yeah. Um, and allow God to work through that situation. Yeah. And I do remember our marches down at Camberwell, especially oh. the night it got split in two. Three. Three. <laughs> it got split in three. Yes. There was like... Half uh, of, almost half of the march yeah. went across the junction. All the the off was it not the officers and then the band and then all the rest. The, the, I, I think there were one or two rows stopped in the middle. Right. And fire engines went either side of these people stuck in the middle of the road. Yeah. 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 Oh, it was yes. Those those matches were something really amazing because there were a lot of people watching and you did feel that you were you were doing something to proclaim God's word to people who didn't know anything perhaps about God's God's word. No doubt there would be a, a number of Christians watching and listening um, and felt that they were part of that spectacle as well. Yeah. We were a we were a spectacle and you know we, we we still make a spectacle of ourselves from time to time. All that in Ireland, no doubt, would be able to testify to that. Yeah. But there's, there's just something wonderful uh, to be part of that. So on that day, I do wonder how would we have reacted um, if Jesus and the disciples start coming into Jerusalem and our attention is turned by something. Now, not long ago, there was a, a bit of a protest on the bridge in yes, Inverness. That's a couple of weeks ago. And our interest was tweaked straight away, wasn't yeah. it? What are, they, what are they protesting about? Anti-vaxxers, it was. Yeah. 
against the vaccine. Well, I'm glad that we've had ours, yes. if this is how we felt. Yes. You know, and thankfully we haven't been too bad at the moment. And, None uh, of the three of us have, really. Probably. that continues. Do you think I was the worst? I don't know. Uh, uh, well, yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah. <laughs> um, but well, was, I'm, on with, day, I'm on day five now. That was with vaccine. Yeah. But it, it got our interest um, as as we went across and I have to say I made my own little protest against the protest by putting my mask on. <laughs> if if those people were going to be there with them without being vaccinated, yeah. I wasn't wanting to particularly walk through a whole lot of people who may well be carrying the illness that we have since got. <laughs> yes, but th th there is something about being part of the protest or part of the crowd. And on that day, people's interest was tweaked by they saw something happening and they weren't sure what it was to, ha to, to begin with. But the suggestion is that they should have known that the person coming on the donkey was prophesied by Zechariah. And that this would have been something that they all got behind and, uh, you know, trees were being stripped of the branches and cloaks were being flung on the road in front of the donkey and the crowd was getting all excited. And I just wonder what happened towards the end of that as Jesus got towards the temple. And how did it all kind of dissipate at the end? And then what happened next? in the coming week. We've all been part of a crowd at some point or other in our lives. Sometimes we're happy about it and sometimes we're not. Recently, well, less so perhaps, but uh, we've all been part of crowds and in them we do tend to behave slightly differently and that's what happened later on in that week. So we're going to turn now to Psalm 376. <coughs> See how we get on with this one. 376. King of kings, majesty, God of heaven, living in me, gentle saviour, closest friend, strong deliverer, beginning and end, all within me, falls at your throne, your majesty. King of kings, majesty, God of heaven, living in me, gentle Savior, God's spare, strong deliverer, beginning and dead, all within me, cause at your throne, your majesty. Well, it was something new and exciting. The parade was forming. Everyone started to run to see what was happening. The people started to stretch their necks to see over the person in front of them. The young children crawled between the legs of the adults to see if they could gaze 
at what was happening. And everyone saw it. A man riding on a donkey. And there were people racing in front of the man on the donkey, <coughs> throwing palm leaves and clothes in the path of the man and the donkey. People started to shout, Hosanna, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. The crowd that gathered along the way started to catch the excitement and they began to shout and run alongside the parade too. As they were running, some in the crowd turned to another and said, Who is this man? Why are we shouting our Hosannas? Is he a king? And the other one turned and said, Yes, we think he is a king, the king of the Jews. See, he's riding on a donkey, as it says in the scripture, that the Messiah would come. And the two of them ran off with the crowd, caught up with the excitement of the moment. And we can be like that too. Caught up in the excitement of the moment, as seen in the following. A young man walked along the street towards his home late one Friday afternoon and was greeted by his two young children. They laughed and bounced with more than the usual amount of excitement. Daddy, daddy, the three-year-old started to say. There's a... The five-year-old stuffed his palm vigorously across the three-year-old's mouth. The three-year-old wrenched free, eyes still sparkling. Daddy, mummy and Jason and me have got a... The hand closed across the mouth again, followed by these firm words from the five-year-old. Sarah, if you don't keep quiet, Daddy's going to know there's a surprise party inside for him. <laughs> After a moment of awesome silence, the five-year-old flushed. Dad artfully pretended not to have heard a word. He hugged both children and laughing together, all three raced into the house. The young children could hardly contain themselves with the excitement of the moment. They knew something exciting was going to happen and they could not hold it in. When the people in Jesus' day saw him riding into Jerusalem that day, they knew that something exciting was happening. They knew that Jesus was riding as the Messiah would. And they thought they knew what that meant. They thought it meant they would be free from the Romans. They thought it meant that Jesus was going to be their king. So they got caught up in the excitement of the moment and celebrated, rejoiced at the picture which was forming in their mind's eye. A picture of a king who would save them. A picture of a nation reborn. A picture of a people who would be free, free to be a mighty nation again. So they celebrated, they danced down the street and they shouted their hosannas. And then, just a few short days later, that same crowd cried, Crucify him! Crucify him! They learned that the picture which was developing in their mind's eye was not the picture that Jesus was painting for himself. The dreams of that Palm Sunday were soon turned into the stark realities of the betrayal, the trial and the crucifixion. Their dreams were paraded down the streets of reality. The reality of the situation was Jesus was not the kind of hero they had hoped he would be. Jesus was not the kind of king to lead an earthly army. Jesus would not deliver the Jews from the Romans. Their dreams of who Jesus was turned into the reality of who Jesus as a heavenly Messiah was, which they could not understand. Even Jesus, as he rode into Jerusalem, wept for his beloved city, as it says in Luke's Gospel, for he knew the dreams of this day would turn into the reality of pain, suffering and death. 
During the week that followed this great triumphant ride into the city, Jesus spoke of the realities of who he was. Remember, he cleansed the temple. He told of the temple's demise. He told of the coming of the Son of Man. In a sense, he shattered the dreams of the people that day. He told of the reality that was to come, the reality of death. The crowds of Good Friday turned against Jesus for one reason, because he didn't fulfil the dreams they had of him the Sunday before. Jesus had them see the reality of who he was, not an earthly king, but a heavenly king. He was not a warrior who would come to destroy the Romans, but he was a warrior who would come to destroy death. He shattered the dreams of the people. He gave them a taste of reality, and for that, the people turned against him. Jesus was painting a picture of the suffering Messiah. A Messiah who would suffer for the sins of all the people. And the people cried, crucify him, because they could not understand that he was to be the suffering Messiah. They cried, crucify him, because Jesus did not, did not fulfil their expectations. They cried, crucify him, because Jesus had let them down. They cried, crucify him, because they wanted a warrior king who would lead them into battle. Jesus was the lamb who was to be sacrificed. The people missed the point and they were very angry. So what about us? Do we get the point? Or are we like the boy in this following story? A group of children one summer afternoon were involved in a football game. When late in the game, the goalkeeper went down injured, leaving one defender facing the onrushing attacker. The defender looked over to the coach for a signal. The coach signalled to save the ball with his hands. The child promptly tried to hit the ball, but it flew past him into the goal. The coach ran up to him afterwards and said, didn't you see me give the signal to save the ball and sacrifice yourself? Yes, the boy replied, but I didn't really think you meant it. But I didn't really think you meant it. Is that how we react to Jesus? We really don't think you meant to be the suffering Messiah. Are we like the crowd way back then, still wanting Jesus to be a conquering warrior? Or, or do we get it? Do we understand? Do we understand that instead we get a Messiah who gives us power, all right, but it's a whole new kind of power. It's the power of suffering love. It's a power that looks me in the eye, forgives me for my sin, my fear, my anger, my resentment, my prejudice. It's a power that didn't assert itself over and against me, but died for me. It's a power that died in my place. It's a power that sets me free from all which is within me that dehumanises me and others. It's a power that loosens my grip on all my expectations and even allows me to see Christ's face in the least and most lowly on the planet. It's a power that reaches out in grace and invites me to join with him in being one of his special grace givers. It's a power that assures me I don't need to be afraid of suffering, self-giving love, because 
It's the only way I will ever fulfil my humanity, find my purpose and experience true joy and peace. As Dietrich Bonhoeffer wrote, God allows himself to be edged out of the world and onto the cross. And that is the way, the only way in which he can be with us and help us. Only a suffering God can help. The crowds on that first Palm Sunday wanted a warrior king, but Jesus came as the suffering Messiah. Jesus came as one who would die on a cross for the sake of humanity. The crowd missed the point. The crowd thought they knew, but they did not. What about us? Do we get it? Is Jesus the suffering Messiah for us? Or are we still looking for a warrior king who will turn the world upside down? Do we see Jesus as the suffering Messiah who did turn the world upside down for our sake and continues to shape the world with his love and grace? As the parade gathers, we see Jesus coming. But what do you see? Pray indeed that you will see the Saviour who came to be your Saviour, to make a difference to your life and to your eternity. We're going to turn in conclusion now to number 366. Number 366. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Lord, we lift up your name with hearts full of praise. Be exalted, O Lord my God. Hosanna in the highest. Okay. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the joining us again this evening and uh, we hope to be back live with you next Sunday evening but um, please stay safe this week mm -hmm. um, I think it's going to make us a wee bit cautious about going out um, but please stay safe and um, we look forward to meeting with you again next week. Have a good week and um, we're just going to share together in our closing prayer. And so we pray, God whose love endures, hear us as we welcome the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hear us as we remember all that you have done in times past and give thanks that your enduring love has embraced even us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God whose love endures, hear us as we welcome the one who comes in the name of the Lord. 
Hear us as we gather in the company of your people, or in company alone with you, and lift up our voices to cry, Hosanna. Lord, in your mercy, hear yeah. our prayer. God, whose love endures, hear us as we welcome the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hear us as we journey through the week that is to come. May we journey in the presence of the one who goes before us, even to the cross. Lord, in your mercy, hear yeah. our prayer. God, whose love endures, hear us as we welcome the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hear us as we listen to the voices who now cry, crucify, and may we know it was for us he hung and suffered there. Lord, in your mercy, hear in our prayer. prayer. God, whose love endures, hear us as we welcome the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hear us as we wait for the dawn to break and for your enduring love to vanquish the darkness. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much for sticking with us throughout <laughs> this. Um, yep. Hopefully we'll get our voices back. Hope so. Maybe even better than to normal. That would be wonderful. <laughs> I, I, yeah, I know there's a few people agreeing with that. Um, we, we're grateful to have had the health and strength to be able to do this. And uh, we just pray that you do indeed stay safe. And we look forward to sharing with you again next week. Good night. Good night. God, God bless, bless you.